Welcome, welcome, Emil Amin. Thank you so much for joining us on Black Ink Cinema podcast. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. So as you know, Black Ink Cinema is all about celebrating Black cinema. So I was so excited. Yes. Boxing Day. I loved it. I love Christmas movies, good feel vibes. And there's always a little cheeky message in Christmas movies. So I, I love that. You have graciously agreed to join us on the show. I can't wait to talk about your new screenplay debut, Boxing Day, which is the first Black British Christmas movie. Is that correct? It's the first Black British Christmas movie, the first Black British rom-com. Uh, yeah, it's the first international film that has the diaspora in it. And so I think, yeah, we we're hitting a few firsts for sure. Absolutely. And so for that, I just want to say thank you so much for creating a relatable Black British Christmas movie that I loved seeing my Christmas experience on the big screen, which yeah. I've never seen before. And it was exactly that. We do have Carrigo and Plantain slash Plantain at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it is not just turkey and broccoli, do you know what I mean? So thank yeah. you. I was cracking up and I really enjoyed seeing that. I'm really, really happy. Loved it, man. I made, I mean, listen, I made the film for for you. I made the film for people like you and, and then you know, for the culture first and then extend it to the wider universal audience, you know? I love a lot of the Christmas movies and it didn't, it didn't matter to me what race anybody was or what cultural background they were from, even if it's American movies, you know, I kind of related to the to the theme. So I'm, I'm happy that you liked it. Absolutely. And I do feel that it was made for me. <laughs> um, and before we get into Boxing Day, I've been a fan of yours since kiddhood. What made you get into acting? I fell in love with acting since I was a kid. I watched a lot of movies with my mum growing up. Um, a lot of old school movies like Stormy Weather, um, you know, a, a lot of old school movies like Philadelphia Story. Uh, the Mickey Rooney, Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire, like that stuff is what I grew up with. Oh, I like those type of films as well, yeah. Yeah, it's just the black and white era. And so that was our fireside situation, you know. So I, I grew up with that in my mind. And very early on, I knew I wanted to be an actor. So I think it was Home, Home Alone that really kicked it off. You know, I was maybe six or seven years old. And I said, I want to be an actor. And then they sent me to stage school where I'd studied for 10 years, but I was working at the same time. You know, I'd work on on stuff like uh, Oliver and Jolson, which is the West End. So I walked past the Palladium and Victoria Palace. Um, I would, yeah, I worked with Michael Jackson. I I, I, I heard about that. Yeah. Do you want to expand a little bit? I was going to touch up on that a bit later, but since you brought it up. Sure, no, it was, it was 1996. It was 1996. I was 10, 11 years old, mm -hmm. um, suited and booted, being driven in a limousine for the first time to go and perform for with Michael Jackson. That must have been incredible. It was crazy. And then to, to do that and then be in a situation where, you know, you're meeting Michael. I spoke to him um, and he was giving advice and you know, wow. secret handshake. And if you learn, it will be successful. <laughs> this sort of stuff. And it was very cool. Very cool. That's Absolutely amazing. So obviously this is your directorial and screenwriting debut. When did you decide you wanted to get into that side of uh, filmmaking? You know, about 10 years ago, I, I started filmmaking. So a lot of people, or maybe a few people, uh, Drink Drugs and KFC was like a short film that I did. Mm -hmm. Check it out, it's on YouTube. It's something I'm really proud of and a lot of young talent that are doing really well now. Yeah. Uh, Samson Ko, Aaron Fontaine, Keita William Sterling from Sex Education. That was their first like big break, I guess. And it was a short film that traveled within the community really well. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to and been writing for, you know, since back in, I guess, when I was, when I did Kid Out and, and The Bill, yeah. I've always been writing consistently. And even before that, it's always been a part of me because I wanted to tell stories that weren't necessarily um, being highlighted at the time. Mm -hmm. Since, since have not necessarily been highlighted in the way that I wanted to, you know. Yeah. I'm a, an actor that's become a filmmaker. I'm actually just a filmmaker and an actor and those right. and an artist and both those, both those, um, it's not a left and right hand, you know, it's mm -hmm. both are needed for me personally. Um, so this is just the world getting to know that side of me. Yeah. And um, hopefully, you know, understanding it's actually a mature side of me that I've just been given the opportunity to finally express in a big way, which I'm yeah. very happy about. 
I mean, you've worked with some amazing directors, Lee Daniels, Michaela Cole, Idris Elba. Um, did they give you any advice or did you reach out for any advice or any mentorship? I texted Idris, but he didn't get back to me. So. <laughs> Idris. <laughs> Come on, Idris, man. Um, now we talk often, but it was more, it was more, it was more observation. Mm -hmm. I observed Idris while he was directing. I was very close to the process because we collaborated quite intimately. And, you know, I just observed more that how he treated his crew. Right. And that he set the tone on set. And it's, it was a very, you know, calm and warm set mm -hmm. uh, with Yadi. And then with Michaela Cole, just her specificity and how much she knew the story, knew the characters. Again, that was gearing up to when I'd be directing. But I've learned from many directors over the years, good and bad, what to do and what to not do. And I think the most fascinating thing is how to run a set. I, I run a set really um, with, with, a, with a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of energy, um, so that you can get your, 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 your colleagues to work with you. So when it's time to get serious, yeah. you earn that space and that latitude in their, in their mind and heart. That's awesome. And I'm sure that creates a really nice environment for everyone to work in as well. Mm -hmm. So there hasn't been any like the best directing advice or acting advice that you've been given that stands out to you. Yeah, people said a friend of mine called MJ Bassett, who directed me in Inside Man 2, mm. he said, you know, everybody's going to ask you for everything. Everybody's going to come up to you about everything. And, you know, you've got to know the answers. That was mm. advice that I was given by her before I started that process. But really and truly, you know, I've lived on sets since I was six years old. And I've often lived on sets more than most of the directors I've worked with. A director gets to, you know, make a film every, if you're lucky, every two to three years, if you're very lucky. An actor lives on set all the time, you know, three, four movie projects a year. So I would say it's a combination of everybody and just observing and just choosing what was best for me along the way. But I, I pretty much know myself really well. So I'm kind of like, I know what it is I want. And I'm quite a strong, bullheaded person about what I want. But at the same time, you know, I'm collaborative with my actors. I tell you, for example, something that a lot of people couldn't tell me because they they weren't they weren't in it. Other than MC, she was in her show. Mm -hmm. But like how to direct and not direct your actors at the same time. So experience with, with Asia. I'm in I'm in scenes with Asia who plays Lisa. Yes. Yeah. And you know, I decided never to call action on my movie. I never called action. I called it once. We had a big crane shot. But other than that, I didn't call it because. It, it felt quite, um, it felt quite intrusive to the process, to the creative process, that that I would be working with my act and they would feel like I'm judging them while we're collaborating together. So I never called action. My first always did that, and um, yeah, I'd say with with in terms of um, collaborating with uh, everybody, I wanted it to feel like playful enough um environment so it's like you know one for one for the take one for me and then one for yourself and, and within that we'll figure it out you know oh wow oh, what do you think <laughs> how much of your own life did it inspire boxing day um yeah so you know my ex-girlfriends are like one of the most famous women in the world and um it's rihanna and <laughs> Obvi. <laughs> Obvi. Obvi. what's up riri I'm sorry. <laughs> My business no listen it was inspired by part imagination uh -huh. and um it was inspired by things that my family got through. So like my parents got divorced, but they got divorced when I was 15, 16, which is very different to them getting divorced when you're 28, right? I live in Los Angeles, I'm an actor, writer, and I just kind of switched that and made him a writer. Um, I've been in relationships with American women, so you know that, and I've introduced uh, uh, American girlfriends to my British <laughs> family and, and observed how everybody got to know each other's culture. Is there a major, yeah, major culture difference? Like, do you feel like it's quite hard? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's, do you know what dominates race, culture? Mm. Dominates race. Like, everybody's very race-focused. Um, right. But the culture, uh, to me, is before, is before race, you know? Like, 
me and you have both got like a where are you, where are you from uganda uganda so you you're we both got our separate specific cultures mm-hmm. in the framework of the fact that we're both black people but you know and it was fascinating if you go to africa they're not really race focused no because everyone's black and cultural exactly right and it's the same in Jamaica. If I go to Jamaica, them, them say, I am a British boy, an English boy. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? You know, whereas a white Jamaican, they consider that person Jamaican. Yeah. It's, I always think there is a difference and it's because of the culture differences, but there are nuances that have traveled, like even in the move, uh, in, in the fact that everyone gathers a family and, you know, food is so important to a lot of um, ethnic groups, you know? Absolutely. Um, so what made you want to do a Christmas movie? It's a genre that we don't devil in that much, apart from the American side, but here we don't have that. So what made you want to do Christmas? You know what? This, I didn't know this is like Warner Brothers' first rom-com Christmas movie. And I was like, wow. What made me want to do it is that my family, we, we have a big Boxing Day party every year. And there was one time in 2016 where we were all like having a good time. And then there was this song... Called um, in our heart by um, <laughs> in our heart in our yeah, heart. Yeah, yeah. My whole family was doing this thing. It was very dramatic around my cousin Josh, and I was like, "Yo, this is like needs to be a movie. It's this, a vibe, yeah. It's got to be a movie." So um, that's where the, the initial thought started, and then it it kind of started moving right from there. So, what's your favorite Christmas movie? If you had to pick one, Oof. or maybe a couple, I'll take that. Favorite Christmas movie. Hmm. You mentioned Home Alone. Is that in there? Home Alone is amazing, isn't it? It's like it's very it's like the adventure story. Yeah. Uh, that um, Love Actually. I love Love Actually. Yeah, I saw the the card references. Right. It? Yeah. 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 Them things aren't working out, my brother. <laughs> it's like we need more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, you gotta do more than that. I love that. I love that line. Um, them <laughs> things don't work <laughs> you know back to one of your old older questions is that so the character Bubsy is really really based on my sister Aretha Amin right like, really I love her sure. character by the way yes yeah, she's everyone's favorite character yeah she's really really how my sister is yes my sister is like a whirlwind of a person and like a complete truth say and so it's um it's interesting yeah but I would say Home Alone, definitely, when I was younger, mm-hmm. I could watch that. Um, mm, love that chess, I said that already. Yeah. I watched The Coming to America and Christmas. There's movies that are not Christmas movies that I like watching. So Christmas. do you consider Die Hard a Christmas movie? Because it's considered People a Christmas movie. People consider it a Christmas movie. People do consider it a Christmas movie. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why they do, but they <laughs> do. Right? I, I'm, I'm down for it, though. Uh, Back to the Future was a big yes. it's on this film. Um, I love the film My Best Friend's Wedding. Um, I really love the film Philadelphia Story, which is a 1944 classic. I kind of I watched that around Christmas. Hmm. Uh, um, Titanic. Okay, I mean, Titanic might be the. Boom. That's a little bit depressing as well. <laughs> I mean, it's Christmas. I need cheer at Christmas. I hear you, but it's so so beautifully done, and, it's not, and Christmas is also about a good cry. That will happen. I often people's Christmases don't go too perfect. You know that, right? Because yeah. The of what Christmas is like. If you actually watch Boxing Day, Christmas, um, Christmas Eve was shit for everybody. Mm. Everyone's sitting in their bed. Like that's when we're like everyone's sitting in their bed and uh, after when, when Melvin goes to see his dad and stuff like yeah. that. Christmas was shit for everybody. It's actually the Boxing Day was like the pressure's off. Like, yeah. And dance. Everyone you know? can relax and just enjoy themselves. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. You're going to London. It's the perfect opportunity for me to meet your family. The superstar has come home! So because obviously this was the first Black British Christmas movie, did you feel the pressure to deliver something that everyone can relate to or enjoy? I felt the responsibility of delivering authenticity and I felt it very important at times to explain that to my partners on the film. Mm -hmm. And so um, there are certain things that I did not um, sacrifice, but they were incredibly supportive. Yeah. I was so convicted about the things I was convicted about that um, they just, you know, one of uh, one of the partners at um, BFI, 
for Han was like, you know, Mel, you were so terribly, terribly convicted and so interesting <laughs> about your arguments. And then I look back on him like he was right. You know what I mean? So sometimes you just got to be really consistent with your thoughts on things. But I, I did. Um, there's nothing I had to, to fight for mm. because they believed in the project. In the project, and they believed in me. You know what I mean? Um, one of the things I love about Boxing Day is the fact that there were conversations and behaviours that I'd never seen on the screen before. Mm. Um, one example being you doing that itchy, sucky thing in the, with the throat. Yes! Yeah. I was crying with laughter because it was like, hold on, did I just hear that right? And then when you put it in the film, I was like, I don't think I've actually ever seen that ever. Yeah. No, that's, that's what, made you, what made you put that in there? That's actually something I do. Okay. <laughs> I itch my throat. Right. I just, I just made it something that was um that was a, a, a nervous Melvin tick. Like he was like, oh that was great. Thank you. And of course, your beautiful uh fiance who's played by Asia Naomi King. Mm -hmm. I thought she was great. How did you decide on her? I was very determined. People were gonna cast the Brit in that role. Okay. They, yeah, there's so much time. I said no. It's 110% got to be an American because they're going to come and it's going to feel like a fish out of water story for them, wow. actually. So half the job is done. Mm -hmm. um, I decided on Asia. Um, my One of my producers was really keen on her. Mm -hmm. My producer, Dominique Telson, and she was like, this woman's really talented. She's really cool. And I, I took a closer look. And then actually after a conversation with her, I, I hired her during the conversation. Oh, brilliant. There's a great, there's a great line um, in Philadelphia story when Jimmy Stewart says to Catherine Hepburn, you know, you're lit from within, Tracy. You're lit from within. You're lit from within, Tracy. He's very dramatic. And she's definitely a person that's very much lit from within. She's very radiant and stood out. And I love that scene when her and Georgia are like exchanging words. Going back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, she's just got a radiance about her and uh, radiant, effervescent, but also extremely smart. Mm. Extremely smart and really in control of her craft and, and herself. And so when we collaborated, it felt very, like, smooth, you know? It felt very, very smooth. And, um, yeah, casting a great actor puts you at ease. You know? Yeah. London! It's not all tea and crumpets, miserable most of the time. Dave screws. I love the scene when you guys are driving to the hotel and you're in the car and she does the Jamaican accent, which <laughs> had me in stitches because I do the world's worst Jamaican accent. So I was yeah, like, and I love this. Accent. I do the world's worst Jamaican accent. Oh, go on then. No. <laughs> go on, man. No way. I am going to my death. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I can't even, I can't even, I could it's in private, like a, even Aussie. Oh, yeah, that is that what you said? It's so embarrassing. How about Yaman? How about Yaman? Yaman. That's not too bad. Okay, Woo! that is such <laughs> a compliment coming from you, Jesus That's Christ. Not too bad. <laughs> I bad. would take that. <laughs> I'll practice, I'll practice. Um, do you have any favourite rom-coms? Uh, my Best Friend's Wedding. Okay, that's a brilliant one. I love my best friend's wedding. Um, when Harry Met Sally is a perfect rom com. Such a classic. Um, the Wood. Mm. I class the Wood as a yeah, class as a rom com. Personally. That's more of a coming of age, no? I mean, to me, it's a rom com in my in my thing because it's it's got a lot of drama to it, but it's it's funny as hell. Mm. Um, so I class that as a as a rom com to me. Um, but yeah, I would say you know my best friend's wedding without question is. You know, I mean, Julia Roberts gives one of the greatest speeches in rom-com history. <laughs> She's got this great scene, which I showed to all of my actors. Right. Both Asia and Leanne. It's the scene where she she confesses her love to her, to her, her friend. And she's like, you know, choose me. Let me make you happy. Oh, right, yes. yes. She's like, I've, I've got this really big favor to ask you. You know, it's it's so it's so it's so powerfully delivered. Oh, another one that's dope, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Oh, yeah, that's a classic. That's a big film. <laughs> it's really do it well, man. Mm. Really do it well, if I may say so myself. <laughs> yeah, they are. We um, make a good rom-com. Do you know what I like about British rom-coms? They're a little bit cynical. 
they've got that cynical nature to it and that, that you know that 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 offbeat um, yeah it's not as um chirpy yeah you know american rom-coms can be a little uh if not done i mean my best as well is my favorite and harry met sally's the goat of rom-coms but they can they can they've lost their what they lost their um sense of humor about themselves yeah, yeah a little bit and i and i thought that um that yeah four weddings and all that do it so well you know i feel like the british were a little bit more unpolished which then makes it more mm, natural relatable yeah. yeah exactly um so your ex-girlfriend in the film is georgia played by okay. leanne pinnock were you always going to cast a real singer for this role no no no, no. I, I i i auditioned some really good actors that could okay. sing Mm. Um, but it was important to me. It was important to me because my film is secretly a musical. Ah, it's got very music. It's a very musical film, you know. Yeah. And, well, mother and uh, and uh, uh, Stephen Delane character dancing to Anita Baker, which is such a beautiful scene. Can I just thank say you, the snow? I was here for it. I was like, we need more of these like grand gestures yeah. breaking out into a. With the, with the big Ferris wheel at the back. Absolutely. Know. So romantic. Yeah. Well, I'm that's, a for that. Comes from the mind of a mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't always going to cast the singer necessarily. I was oscillating between both. Um, but when I met Leanne, eventually I really found um, the, a person that had the humanity, mm. had the level of um, sensitivity and um, pathos that would allow for an audience to be feel connected to her absolutely and i did like, I did, despite, did you, okay great yeah yeah i did i thought she played that role really well she did a really good job the singing was beautiful um and even at times i just felt so sorry for her i was like mm. the girl can't catch a break like but i felt as well that a lot of women will be able to relate to what she's going through yes uh, that she is stunning and everyone keeps telling her she's beautiful she's talented she's got you know an amazing career but her love life is just a little bit you know, <laughs> this way. And, you know, people who are successful in whatever field, especially women, feel that sometimes that, that will suffer, like their mm -hmm. love life will suffer because of it. So I felt that was, I don't know if you did that intentionally, but you were definitely spot on there. Yes, I did intentionally. <laughs> you knew what you were doing. Yes, and, I knew what I was doing. Yeah, and yeah. when she took the kind of L at the end, Oh, big, that was big woman. That was... That's the biggest thing is that, that was big, big she basically woman. Yeah, has yeah. done enough research. She sees, she sees um, Bubsy's, sees the, Bubsy sees the video, has a conversation with her, mm. and sings the song that he sang to. That's love. That's a real love. Absolutely. Truly loving someone beyond, you know, no. uh, Eros or, you know, it's a agape love. It's the, it's the highest form. Yeah. Which, you know, in, in essence, other than self-love, I think is the highest form. But it's, mm. it's, it's, a, it's an element of sacrifice, um, sacrifice. Another aspect you touched upon quite lightly was with um, Georgia and Booksy, the light skin, dark skin conversation. And I have to say the way you approached it in this film was something that I was more familiar with because in other, when it has been raised in previous films or whatever, it's always quite, aggressive and yeah, you know yeah, yeah. versus them kind of attitude whereas this was more <laughs> in a banterish way like how what's the line that I, what's the line i said again I, um uh, but you're lighty they, 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 <laughs> she goes aren't i aren't i really beautiful she goes you're lighty they like they push lighties they push lighties and it was just like wow like but it wasn't in a malicious way it was just like Come on, this is facts. We know this. Let's not act like you don't know. Like this is the norm. She's like, you're out of order. Yeah. The Nigerian gut too. If you'd have been okay, but you. All just... of that. All of that. <laughs> yeah, Tamara Lawrence, who plays Bubsy, is exceptional. She's brilliant. She's and brilliant. And I can't wait to see her in more stuff as well. Oh, she's a brilliant. I mean, you probably won't see that character again. No, of course. She's very, very transformative. She's actually not like that. Mm. She's Which such is even amazing. Sense. Yeah, she's incredible. Really transformative actor. She is a superstar. It is in the past. We've had sex to her music. Wow, fam. It just got worse. Was it intentional to have uh, a dark skin lead and, you know, uh, Georgia's character to be biracial? 
Uh, yes, because it's reflective of something in my family. So my mum's best friend is a lady called Caroline and she was married to a Nigerian man. Right. That's where it just, it just that was always going to happen because it was authentic, right? And I, and, I, and I would never have liked to make a film where I'm not representing the potential spectrum of beauty mm-hmm. with race, you know what I mean? So I, that's, that's probably why I lean towards um, a darker skinned woman mm. the, for, for the... Um, for the lead. Lisa character. Yeah. Which is, I was not missed on me, I have to say. I was like. Hey. <laughs> and was, yes. I studied A level drama, and one of my favorite Greek mythology stories is of Oedipus. And I often find that this is a trend in movies and rom coms that the thing you're running away from is the thing that you end up becoming. And this is the theme that I found in this, that you run away from your family after the big disaster of Boxing Day, um, only to kind of come back and find yourself in a little love triangle, a little pickle of the thing that you were kind of disappointed in your parents for either giving up or your dad for doing what he did. Yeah, I think that often uh, men or, or boy, ch- boy children is my grandpa. <laughs> um, I know, love that. We, we, love, we, love our, we love our mothers. And we judge our fathers, you mm. know. And I think it is not until you're older that do you really get a perspective on what challenges they may have faced. And also that despite us loving our mothers, our mothers are human beings. They're just girls that grew up. And our fathers are just boys that grew up. And when you start to look at your parents from a human perspective and see you see yourself in them, and the fact that if you have a child, you, you might not feel f- f- like a fully formed individual, but this child is going to look at you like, you have all the answers. you closest thing to God that's out here. Do you get what I'm saying? So about this, that was just about like um, a coming of understanding for Melvin that, you know, yeah. The hardest thing is when you grow up and you realise your parents are just human and they do have their mm-hmm. flaws as well. I remember that reckoning was like, ah you're not perfect this is weird (laughs) another aspect or subject that you touch upon is the relationship between your your mom and her new boo in this and her new boo um Mm -hmm. the interracial relationship aspect and it was a very soft conversation it wasn't no one was arguing there was no disrespect and he was sharing his concerns and she was just letting him know like this is this is my background this is where I'm from Mm -hmm. this is all new to me yeah, I think in the end, it comes down to like, um, love wins the day. Mm. Ultimately, love is love. Mm. That's just, that's what it is. And I think with with um, with Shirley, she's expressing that potential uh, ill feeling or bad feeling or fear because she thinks it's completely anti the way she taught her children to have self-confidence right and 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 so I was just I was just making a a a quick statement on conversations I've heard black women say Mm. their choice of partner and perhaps he's white and them feeling as though oh I have I am I selling out my race a little bit Mm. a lot of white people that not in interracial relationships they may not know that black people would have that trepidation and I thought it important to, to to highlight it because it's very it's very real, you know. And feel judged by the community. And yeah, stuff. exactly, exactly. And actually, the kids don't give a shit. Yeah, exactly. It's like why are you making that feel? Exactly, and that's what's kind of ironic and fun about it is that the the kids are not really bothered. It doesn't affect them, you know. They want yeah. everyone to be happy above all else. Exactly. She was making more of a big deal than they actually care too yeah but and that's about generations right mm-hmm. a certain generation you you carry a perspective over and sometimes if you don't update your software mm-hmm. you know, your phone starts stops working right so it's that kind of vibe you think introducing me is going to be the controversy of the night excuse me who are you do you feel there's been a shift in the entertainment industry in the last few years giving black creatives more of a chance and more of opportunity? A hundred percent, right? You've got you've got evidence of that. And I think that's a mixture of people going, becoming global successes. And then I think that's a mixture of 
uh, times changing. I, I think that's a mixture of music really um, infiltrating, mm. being, um, <laughs> has become, is it's like the captain of the ship in terms of our integration as a society. society. It travels faster and quicker and in more excess than, than movies do, right? So I think all of those things have contributed. And um, yeah, you know, um, I think Boxing Day will do that as well. Yeah. In its success, you know, it's a film that people go, wow, we really, really got, um, you know, we've really got something on our hands. And I think in terms of the culture um, globally, we, we're going to feel, if you're in America and you're around the world, you're like, oh, I get to understand what. Exactly. You know, I get to understand who Chiwetel Ejiofor was. <laughs> I'm seeing his family life. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if 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 um and for for black people um of this country, I think it's 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 an event moment. It's an event piece. Mm. For all of us to kind of go look. Like you've watched the film, right? But you should still be going to see it on Friday. Oh no, I am, and I've already roped in my sister. You should go see it on Friday. I am. <laughs> yeah. I go. Yeah. Don't worry. December third. Um, everybody should be going and. Mm. They sure that 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 opening weekend is a statement to everybody going look we we love the film uh some of us not might like not like the film we might criticize it but it's ours yes exactly and we're gonna and we're gonna champion it in that way you know yeah. and which is what we're all about yes. um you've played some amazing roles and been in some amazing films which has been your most challenging what's been your favorite one of my favorite is Yardi. One of my favorite, like, I love that. I loved your performance in that. Um, again, because it had that British feel, it had that something that I could see and relate to and recognize. I was just like wicked um, from the music, the cinematography, like everything about it. It was beautiful, was, the like, cinematography. Yeah, sure. gorgeous. Like, How well, did you feel about the, uh, the character in A Mask and Society, this conversation on I May Destroy You? I, first of all, one of my favourite series ever. You yeah. liked it? I, everyone knows I love Michaela Cole. That series was fantastic um, on such an awkward subject. Your character is a lot of everyone guys that character. I know. <laughs> a lot of guys you know? Yeah. That's exactly what I wanted it to be, you know? Yeah, a lot of guys that I know. That and guy, that London breader that's just like, got the bit of the cash flashing on <laughs> I did not feel at, at all at any point that you, no, nah, that's not real, or he's like, over. Oh, no, that is, that's him. That's the guy, yeah. That's David. <laughs> I did, I did, David. I did my British Wolf of Wall Street impression. Oh, it's really, yeah. no, I'm going to play Leonardo DiCaprio for this one. And I, I, I got that, and I call that, um, that privileged right. person. Like, <laughs> got it all, you know, got the money. Yeah. So this is like options, isn't it? Like, don't at me. I can, <laughs> I can do what I want kind of thing. Maze Runner, Sense8. Oh, I haven't seen Maze Runner. Oh my God, Maze yes. Runner. Also, wow. fan of that film. But um, it was nice to see, uh, I love seeing Brits in American blockbusters. American movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I just know it's upsetting someone somewhere, but. Um, I just wanted I just wanted to know, when I like to see if people feel like they're watching the same person or just do you feel like the character? Not at all. I think you're super versatile and you're able I never think, oh, he's playing exactly the same person, which there are some actors who do that. It's like you can literally pick up, pick them up and put them in another film and nothing. And they do it well. Some, some no, of them. No, no, like, shade at all. Yeah. Um, but you definitely don't. Mage yeah. Run is completely different to Yardi, of course. Yardi is completely different to kid adulthood. So mm -hmm. at no point are you ever thinking, like, there's no evolution in this. So, as, so in watching... Sorry, I'm interviewing you now. I know, he just flipped in, it. In, in watching the performances... Do you, would you say you get an understanding of, would you go, like, so if, if we both watch Will Smith, yeah, we go, that's Will Smith. Like, we understand yeah. that that's the personality. Now, do you feel up until uh, Boxing Day, you've got a sense of who a may be, or have I been a bit of an enigma as, you know, this is an actor that I see in different stuff, but you don't get a sense of that's who a male is? I think because I am Black British, I think I know who Emel is. Does that make mm. any sense? Because, but I think films like Boxing Day and your character in I May Destroy You, 
mm -hmm. helps kind of link those two up a bit better. Okay. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. okay, I get it. I don't, well, and it's well, like, I've, only, I've only played a handful of British people. I've not yeah, played. and it's good I say that, but, yeah. and of course I don't know you, but in your head you kind of like make up who this, who you think this person is and what they're about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, what I think is that, um, what I hope more than anything is that, especially the culture of London and you, you know, London, I would say London, but you <laughs> black culture. We are obviously individuals. We're not a monolithic group. We're not a monolithic group. We're not. <laughs> we're not. But I really get it. Mm. And then if you listen to the film, if you listen to Boxing Day, like watch it, but if you listen to it, you'll get, understand that I get it. Even in the, the place that I'm in my career, you know, oh, you know you're, uh, you know, oh, Daniel's in America, or John's da 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 da, mm. Idris Elba da da da, Guggen mm. like, like we, I speak for at least most of them, we get it. We're still connected to the source. You know? That's something I'm very happy about when it comes to boxing. Day, we, if you watch it and listen to it, you're like, he knows what I'll go on to. Mm. And I, it's, it's definitely transcends on the screen. So you did mm -hmm. your job there, 110%. <laughs> I just whispered you there. No, seriously. Um, and that's what I love, I think, about or advocate for like British Black actors and why I feel so protective over them. I don't know none of you lot, but to me, you're like my, my brothers and sisters, like don't yeah. hurt them, please. Um, and I cheer for you guys as if you're my friends, because that's how, you know how London is, it's quite small in the UK, yeah. but you just feel more connected, maybe. I don't sure, know, sure. it's a it's sure. weird thing. Well, thank you for asking, answering my questions and my interview. <laughs> it's all right. I wasn't ready for that, but uh, I hope it made sense. It did. <laughs> Thank you. So I don't know if you did answer what your favorite role or challenging role was. Oh, I'm, I'm playing Martin Luther King right now. This is definitely the most challenging role I would have ever played. I'm doing, um, I'm playing Martin Luther King in a Netflix movie called Rustin. It's about the relationship and friendship between Bayard Rustin, who organized the March on Washington and Martin Luther King. It's directed by George Seawolf, who directed Ma Rainey's Black Bomb. Oh, brilliant. Produced by um, Barack Obama and Michelle Obama. And that is the, that's the daunting task of one. Jesus, that's a bit heavy. Uh, <laughs> now I've gone through 75% of it. I've shot most of it already. And I, I even gave the I Have a Dream speech. <gasps> How did that feel? It, you know what? Um, you hope, you hope for the best. Yes. And, and you really just sit and um it's the deepest honor i've ever had in my career and the deepest honor i've ever had um just in, in yeah in my in my artistic life trying to understand um the man and and to house his spirit um uh, it's a profound experience very emotionally profound experience and yes dr king is who he is up there but actually, when you source it down to the nitty gritty of who he is, he was actually a genius. Mm. I didn't know, I didn't personally didn't know Martin Luther King was a genius, but he was a certified genius. Like he went to went to university by the time he was 15 years old. Like, you know, these are these are things that that he experienced. And um, yeah, it was a wonderful honor. And uh, yeah, so that's the big one. I can't wait to watch that. Do we that'll be next year, that'll be like end of next year. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure you will do an amazing job at playing. Yeah. So between that and I have a show out in February that's um I play uh I play this uh this it's called the Porter and it's set in the 1920s and I play a, a porter that becomes a gangster and it's like the rise of him, him becoming a gangster during that time and that was really challenging because I had to put, I was a musician in it as well so I'm playing the track here. I'm doing so, so, you know, the past year and a half, two years, the stuff I've got coming out, inclusive of Boxing Day, are, I think some of the most challenging work I've ever had. And it, again, it sounds very versatile, yeah. which is what I love about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a stretch from me, for sure. So we're going on to the quick fire round, which is celebrating Black cinema. Let's give a shout out to some of your favourite Black lead movies and actors. We'll start with a nice and easy one. Who Let's take it nice and easy. <laughs> Favourite Black dramatic male actor? 
and we'll do female as well. I can't see myself. Okay, cool. Uh, you can't uh, do that. It's not fair. I can't do that. It probably still is. Yeah, it probably still is Denzel Washington. Mm. I just think what he's done throughout his career has been very prolific and he's been so acutely good so many times. Mm. Um, so I, 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 I really respect him. Like some of, some of my favorite moments in, in movie history has come from him. What's your favorite Denzel film? Malcolm X, without question. It's such a prolific experience, you know. It's a great film as well, but Malcolm X, but he just got such great moments, you know, John Q. In John Q, he gives the greatest speech to a son that's ever been given. John Q, I feel speech. I'm crying now. Yeah. Like, I don't even understand. That film traumatized me. <laughs> yeah, and it's effectively a B movie, right? Mm. It, but it, it was really powerful. So, yeah, I go with uh, Mr. Washington. I agree with that. What about female actor? I think it's Naomi Harris. Oh, she's brilliant. I really think she's an excellent actor. When she did Mandela, mm. was Elba, her Winnie Mandela was crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I love, love, love uh, Naomi Harris. What about your favorite comedic actress and actor? It might be like Eddie Murphy in the 80s and 90s. Oh, yeah. Or Will Smith in The Fresh Prince. That's a shout. It's just so, you know, I, I keep loving that, you know. What about your favourite Black director? Um, favourite Black director? I think it's a mixture between Steve McQueen and George C. Wolf. George C. Wolf, uh, who's directing Rustin, the Martin Luther King. Um, I've worked with him. Yeah. And so he ha has uh, graduated to being my favourite, uh, one of my favourite directors, Mm. period right um that I've worked with because he's he's exceptional what he does you know back in 20 whenever I made the butler I had a good time with Lee Daniels as well he yeah. talked a lot during that time but yeah I probably say ultimately Steve McQueen in terms of just working mm. his work I've not worked with him yet but I would love to I think it would be a, a collaboration for the ages yeah what about your best like lead movie of all time oh man I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Malcolm X. I love that movie. I mean, that's my go-to um, black movie. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you about all things film, especially Boxing Day. I will be dragging everyone that I can find to go watch that movie and more. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for creating something that I can finally relate to. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wish you all the best. I appreciate it. I'll see you again. Take care. Merry Christmas, London. Boxing Day.